for for making the contact, right? Because I reached out to you and you said, hey, I'll, I'll reach out to Riley. She'll do this. No worries. So <laughs> Craig told you she's amazing. <laughs> uh, Riley, it's great because uh, Craig, Craig talks a lot about you, actually. <laughs> he does. He does. Stuff, I hope. <laughs> Well, because when we do the when we do the member mixers, and he's sharing uh, so much of his work, and everybody kind of wants to know, like, you know, how are you doing all this, and who's this amazing model, and all that, and he's like, oh, well, it's Riley. Oh, hey, it's Riley. Oh, here's another <laughs> show with Riley. Riley, <laughs> you'll probably sick of seeing my face. <laughs> oh no, no, it's it's good. Oh look, Kira's in here. That's that's my daughter. That's my boss. <laughs> Oh man, Kara's lovely. Well, you know she's she's the one who put the comma after professional, but mm -hmm. missed. <laughs> I'm not. Missed the I'm missed not the gonna call her out or anything. No. <laughs> but I'm not quite sure how to change my bio description yet, so I got to figure that part out. But I thought what would be really fun for us to do is to really just to kind of chat about. Um, What's it like to be a model, right? Because I photograph weddings and portraits. I, I, don't, I don't have models. Everybody I have is they don't know how to pose and they don't know how to move and they don't know how to do any of that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, being a model, a photograph model. So like there's, there's this different stylizing that happens, you know, when somebody knows how to pose or they're aware of their hair or they're aware of where their hands are or their feet placement, right? Like... <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then for Riley, for you being on the other side of the camera, you've got to have some pretty cool thoughts on what that's yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just uh, just tell us who, who is Riley um, and what it is that, you, that you're doing. Yeah, so um, I start, I've always been dancing. I danced like all through my childhood and I never really wanted to be a professional dancer, but then I found modeling and like it was just such a cool merge. So, yeah, I started modeling just as a hobby about eight years ago um, and just did it as a hobby, just did a whole lot of TFP shoots and I loved it. But I lived in a little country town, so there wasn't many photographers. Um, then I moved to the city for uni and I kept going and it got bigger and bigger. And, yeah, I've been doing it as a sort of profession for the last four years um, and I absolutely love it. My favourite style is definitely art nude just because it's so much more creative, I think. Um, but yeah, no, I've been super lucky to travel around Australia and Europe doing it. So yeah, it's, it's an amazing job. I love it so much. And wow. yeah. So you get to travel and then do all, and, and do the modeling. Is that what you're doing? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So I do it in Australia and then I went backpacking around Europe and I was like, oh, let's just see if I can book a shoot or two. Ended up doing a full tour. I had 27, 28 shoots. I think it was ended up being so yeah, it's really cool because a lot of places I go, I can normally get a bit of work, which covers the costs, which is nice. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, I love that guy says uh, Joshua, who is part of our Twit Pro community. Uh, he really likes your office. I like that. <laughs> oh yes, thank you. <laughs> I got rid of that one away. I don't. I don't think we've ever seen anybody in the car. I think that. Is, that is so I'm living on my parents' farm, and our internet's normally all right, but it's been so dodgy the last day. I was like, oh god, I'm not risking it. So yeah. Car office, it is. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Riley is echoing. Um, um, yeah, is it the volume on your laptop? Maybe Riley. Um, let me turn it. Down just to speak on your on your laptop, or that might be Ooh, a bit sorry, of feedback. Just... Like, uh, is this better? Just say something again. Let me. Um, yep. Is this kind of better? Maybe. I think that's a bit better. Oh, okay. If not, I can try without the headphones. And we can see if that works better. Yeah, I'm not getting any echo, so it's gone um, now. I think. I just... Okay, let's keep going, and then if it needs readjusting, we can. Yeah, yeah. So Craig, tell tell yeah, us about uh, Craig. Tell us tell us who Craig Stanfley is. Uh, I'm a commercial photographer based in sunny Brisbane, in uh, in Australia, and uh, I started photo. I went commercial. I went professional about five years ago, five and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> most of my work is sort of real estate and architectural based and sort of getting to know other people within uh, a couple of different f photography communities here in Brisbane sort of got me exposed to other genres, other things that um, were of interest and sort of stumble along the, the, the fine art nude side of things. And 
it was never a, a genre that I thought I'd ever pursue. But then, you know, you meet people like Riley and you meet other photographers and and they sort of explain a little bit more about the photography, about the genre, how we're actually doing it. And uh, it actually was very, very interesting. And, uh, yeah, sort of worked with Riley a few times now and uh, she's an absolute dream to work with. So <laughs> the fine art nude part, was that was that something that, that Riley brought to that and said, hey, you know, I, I want to do this? Or was that something that you went to her and said... You know, this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> no, it was actually I was at a um, a workshop. So the first one I went to was a, like a intro to art nude, and I just sort of you know spoke to my wife about it. So look, I want to I know some of the photographers. I want to see what it's about, and um, sort of explore it a bit more, and just sort of see if it's of interest. I'm just sort of curious. And um, the probably two or three months later, there was a full day workshop that uh, Cam Atria, local photographer here in Brisbane, was running. And Riley was one of the models. So that's when I first met Riley. And um, then we sort of met up on other little workshops, other little, uh, we did a, a shoot for Clive Fox when he had a studio in Ipswich. Oh, cool. And so you're swapping photos and things like that. And so you're getting to know the people. And um, Riley's just someone I've, I've enjoyed working with. And she's, you know, quite adventurous. She, you know, she's not afraid to go sit on the edge of a rock or climb a tree or something like that. <laughs> so some of the stupid shoots that I've come up with, you know, where we're going to do a sunrise shoot in the middle of winter. At 2 a.m. starts. 2 a.m. start. <laughs> and off, off we go. So, you know, there's only certain people that you could sort of entertain a shoot like that with. And uh, so far I haven't found something that you'll say no to. So I keep having I to would... come up with more and more daring ones. I would wake up for our sunrise morning shoots and all my housemates were getting back from the nightclubs and yeah. I'm there, like, getting ready to go to work. <laughs> uh, so which one of you have had the crazier ideas? I'll give Craig credit for that one, definitely. Uh, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the crazy bit is I want to stay on the safe bit and she's going to go climb over there and uh, just let, you know, yell out to me when you're ready and I'll start <laughs> shooting. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, uh, oh, hey, hey, Imp, thanks for coming in. And uh, who else? Anybody else new? We got uh, Roaming Wrangler. That's Thomas, I'm, I'm guessing, right? And uh, yep, you're right, Lobase. I am streaming at 1080. I am not mm. sure how to turn that off yet. So, <laughs> apparently, uh, when you stream to, to mobile, the 1080 doesn't do as well. So, uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that it I'm hoping that it still works, though. So, Super cool. So what got me really, you know, interested in just having you guys on to chat with was uh, some of the images that Craig had been posting, right? And then specifically, there's the image on the bridge, right? There's there's this image right here. Like, well, there's this area. I, I love this. I love this one image right here that, that Craig gave me. Uh, let me see if I can <laughs> Uh, you know which one I'm bringing up, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I love that. Like, Craig is over there, and you're. <laughs> so he put this. He put this in um, the Twip community, and we talked about it, and we said, "Holy crap, that is that is an amazing location." Then he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Riley out there. I think." <laughs> <laughs> oh man hey guys hey thanks for coming in f stop dave lion hey guys loose and gadwit some of these names i can't pronounce geeky you're in there thanks guys um yeah i'm thinking does riley know she's gonna go out there on the bridge we, we talked about it <laughs> yeah so so i'm based in brisbane and this uh this is the gateway bridge which goes sort of um uh north to south, uh, east of Brisbane. Uh -huh. And so I'd actually shot this earlier in the year. And uh, when I would have when I would have been sharing the images in Twit Pro, um, it was a, a case of really enjoyed the, the shoot as it is, just a night nice shoot with this amazing structure. But it's missing something to sort of tell the story of, of the scale. And um, so I thought, right, I, I need to come back and uh, shoot a model on this. And, uh, yeah, for, for something like this, it, it, Riley, I know, is... Um, probably more than capable. She's she's up for something like this, and so I sent her, you know, <clears throat> sort of a brief message. I got an idea. Then I sent her this, and so that sort of got the ball rolling. Wow! And as wow. you can see, the scale is a little bit different to my drawing. 
<laughs> just a just a little bit. So so Riley, were you uh, you know tell me about it? Were you surprised to have to get out there? Did he tell you all this ahead of time? Like tell me what that was like. How'd you get out there? Yeah, yeah, no, he's Craig's really good because like. Letting the model know what's going on beforehand is really important. So Craig's really good at that. Like we had it all discussed beforehand, so there's no surprises. Um, it was bigger than I was expecting, but <laughs> that's because the photo wasn't to scale. Um, but no, that. I actually provided the boat that got us out there, so, <laughs> so really? I was well aware of what was happening. <laughs> My, um, um, boat. <laughs> well, well, yes. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, with so this is obviously out in the river, and. Um, the rocks underneath are quite accessible and i said look all i need to do is okay we'll agree on a date before the the shoot i've just got to get an inflatable boat and i've just got to i'll either buy one or i'll i'll find someone nearby who's got one that i can borrow for the night and riley sort of messages back well i think we might actually have one hang on let me check and she popped back later that afternoon and said uh yeah look um we've got one here at home no problems at all i'll, I'll add it to my checklist <laughs> and uh, so her little office that she's in now, that came fully loaded with a, an inflatable boat and a couple of wedding dresses. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> my, packing, my packing list for that trip was very interesting. It was yeah. high heels, point shoes, wedding dresses, blow up boat. Or... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. What else did you bring? Tell me everything that you brought, Riley. What, 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 what does a shoot like this require? Because I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to go do a shoot and I got to get a model, I can't have you come out. Um, I don't know if you come to the States, like we'll have to figure that out. Um, yep. but what's in what's in the list? Well, I mean, think, yeah, Craig and I discussed when it's art new, it does make it easier because there's less outfits to bring it's along, but I always bring some outfits, um, just in case. So obviously the wedding dress came along, um, my point shoes and the blood boat, the oars, what else? High heels. Yeah. Just a whole lot of random stuff. You had a Shelf leather jacket. Shorts, oh yeah. The leather we, jacket. Yeah. We were waiting for the tide to go up. Um, Cause we actually paddled out the first time. Uh, and again, this sense of scale thing sort of uh, messed, messed me up a little bit. And um, thankfully it was, I knew it was going to be a rising tide. So we paddled out and we just, it was just too high for Riley to actually um, okay. grab the top of the concrete pad to jump up on. So we came back and we just did some shooting underneath the bridge. So uh, Riley in her point shoes, and then we did some stuff in a leather jacket, another couple of bits and pieces. And then about an hour later, we paddled out and it was high enough that she could um, jump up. Just. <laughs> just, just. How, how high is that? Like that, so so you had to wait for the tide to rise so yeah. that you could get the boat out there, right? Mm -hmm. And then how high is that that ledge right there? I uh, could probably, like just like put my hands up and like get up just when the yeah. tide was down up more. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was sort of on my knees stretching up to grab the top of it so I could hold the boat in place while Riley carefully stood up and then sort of crawled up over the edge. So yeah, the, Craig the, the, is ridiculously it, tall. Just <laughs> <laughs> the the pad on the left is where Riley was. The the one on the right's even higher. So um, quickly realized that this particular option was not going to be uh, available to us that night. So um, um, I went back to the bit to the rocks and um, shot from there, and I think it actually turned out to be a a better spot because I could actually get more of the bridge uh, in the background. So it's good. Crazy. It's uh, it's such an amazing location. So mm. I, I'm curious, like in a place like that, if I found a location like that here, there is no way that I would be allowed to go out there and photograph, let alone go out there and photograph nudes. Mm -hmm. So. I, how does that work? How do you go? How can you get away with that? I couldn't do that here. Nowhere. <laughs> Not even far um, away. <laughs> I don't know. We, we, we did look for signs and there was no signs that saying no art nude photography allowed <laughs> or far left or no, no trespassing we, or whatever. So we always go for the ask for forgiveness, not permission. Correct, approach. Correct. It definitely works so out better. Could, so. <laughs> oh, man. And, uh, Riley, you spoke to somebody before the shoot, didn't you? Uh, someone was questioning whether who was it? Oh, my mom was like, "Is that legal?" And then, and then I asked my um, my housemate's girlfriend was she's a lawyer, so I was like, "What do you reckon?" She's like, "Ah, oh, should be fine." <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I I don't I don't know for sure. Um, hey Michelle, thanks for dropping in. Uh, Michelle is another amazing streamer here. So yeah, uh, she's a concert photographer. And Ooh. so she's got to, yeah, yeah. You got to go check out her stuff. Yeah, her stuff. I will, I will. 
And now that now, Craig, now that you're introduced to Twitch, there is going to be a whole new community of photographers that you didn't know existed. Yeah, yeah, Michelle and and Bob. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good guys here. I'm Very I'm cool. still learning the the whole thing. So, oh, and Frederick is asking, "Where's my stream?" So apparently, he doesn't know how to use Twitch either. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hanging on, I am. He's a little bit old. I'm gonna send him a text. Let's see if let's see if he can make it. Oh, I don't want him to join the meeting. That would be that'd be terrible. He'll pop in and <laughs> and do that. so. I will copy that. We'll see what he does. Let's see if we can get him in here. This is all very much learning for uh, <laughs> both of us and Michelle and another gentleman, Shu. We were just on a conference call a little bit ago, <clears throat> and they're mentoring us a lot, trying to help us get <laughs> things figured out. So we. <laughs> Um, you know, telling me like, oh, we have to do this next and stuff. So these will just get better. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Oh, and yes, Bradley, we're, we're the rock bottom and then it'll just peak after that. Yes. Yes. You guys are the rock bottom. Yeah. yeah let's start with Australia, but, wick your way up. <laughs> that's the way it works. It's, it's weird because we've done interviews before, mm -hmm. right? But, but the style of them is so much different. So, oh, and Michelle says it's nice to hear some Aussie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't remember where you are, Michelle. Maybe you can throw that in there. That would give us a geographical <coughs> reference to to where you're at. But you know, it 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 like that location. Oh, she's in Melbourne. Mm. Nice. Ooh, stay away. Oh, shame. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so well, we're not, the borders are closed to Melbourne. Uh, I hope you're what? doing all right in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, is Melbourne COVID central? Yeah. So Melbourne's the capital of Victoria, and Victoria's had a bit of a, a hot spot re recently in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of people did the, the wrong thing. Well, you know what? It's it's going to pass, and then mm -hmm. and then when it passes, it's going to be all that much more fun to get together. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Because that's, yes. that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So with with a location like that, uh, so it started it started Craig with you just kind of going out there photographing that and thought, okay, I need to put a person there. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know when we you know we joke about you know Troy Miller once so you know there's going to be a bride and a landscape or something like that. For me, it was a case of I need a uh, you know a, one of the models I like enjoy working with needs to be stuck out there on a concrete pad in the middle of winter, uh, preferably with no <laughs> clothes on type thing. Right, right. Well, you know what's so different between, <laughs> between what you're doing with this is I don't get to choose the locations and yep. I don't get to choose the outfits. Yep. <laughs> 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 that you even have the opportunity to go, hmm, I want to shoot there and I'm going to go pick this model, you know, because I like that look. Yep. And this is the outfit or the no outfit or whatever. This is the look I'm going for. Correct. So, I'm very, and, I'm and I must admit, the um, the wedding dresses uh, that was Riley's idea. She goes, "Would a would a wedding dress sort of suit this location with the the concrete and the darkness and sort of stuff?" So, this this is where the the chatting between two we'll say creatives uh, really helps because you you sort of bounce ideas off each other and you come up with sort of a plan. And this is what I have in mind. And these are some of the poses, or or we can sort of leave the poses sort of a little bit fairly fairly open, and then just. Try and come up with something. Yeah. So, so Riley, do you have like your clothes hidden around the corner and your outfits and all that stuff up there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I have a little backpack with all my stuff. I just kept it behind that pillar. So then, it would look quite funny because Craig, you actually couldn't see him if you were walking past. He was like hiding under this bush in the dark. <laughs> so it looked like I was just happily <laughs> dancing away on this thing. <laughs> so I was down on the rock past. <laughs> Yeah, that so, made me sorry. I made you sound way more creepy then. Yeah, thank you. But thank yeah, you very much. <laughs> but yeah, no one could see the a photographer all at right. all. They could just see me doing my thing there. So it would look very weird if anyone was walking past. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, that is even that is even <laughs> even better. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love these. All right. Oh, uh, low base guy says these are some of my favorite shots from Craig. They are, you know, Craig has posted some really amazing images, and I gotta say, Riley, you make you make Craig's work look really good. <laughs> I've been saying that all along. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Riley, are you are you doing these poses on your own? Uh, hey, yeah. Mike. 
Are you doing these books on your own or is is Craig directing you? Yeah, so, well, I normally, when I go to shoot, I just sort of run through what I think works and I say to the photographer, you know, if you have any ideas, let me know. If not, I'll just do my thing. So, yeah, with Craig and I work really well. You know, he'll be like, oh, yep, just do this a bit. So it's kind of, it's very much a team effort, but um, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. And, and then and in a situation like this, is there was quite a bit of distance, so it's not like Riley can sort of we can just sort of chat and and uh, let me do this. I'm sort of screaming over, saying do that again or hold still for a second and okay move now, um, that sort of thing. That's how it sort of, <laughs> kind of worked for this particular. Story. Yeah. Gosh, I keep seeing I keep seeing Riley out there all by herself, and. <laughs> It's like Craig's just kind of off over on the side, like, oh, I got to change. I got to change my lens. And Well, that's what would happen. And, and particularly particularly when we got to the to the artistic nude side, I would yell out, okay, you can go put your jacket on. So she would go and grab her jacket because it's still quite cold here in, win- in Brisbane in winter. And so she would, you know, put a jacket on and then I would change lens or change position. And then um, I'd say, okay, I'm ready to go again. Let's go. And she would, you know, pop the jacket around the corner and then go through her repertoire of poses. Oh and my to God. add to this, I forgot to put my contacts in, so I couldn't really see Craig at all either. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah, so it's not like I can say, look at me, because it's not like I've got an because this was all ambient light from the bridge. So we're not, there's no external strobes or a torch or anything like that. Oh, we were just working wow. with the light from the bridge. I was going to ask yeah. you about that. So there yeah. just conveniently happens to be a giant spotlight right there. Correct. And that's why I thought, well, this is a you know, prime spot to put a model. There, it's, wow. it's begging for a model to be out there. So we did. So, so Riley, how, how familiar are you with the photographer side of the camera? You know, and I ask that because... You know, my, my, my clients, you know, my brides, you know, they don't often uh, get to look through a camera. So they don't really have that idea of what they look like on the other side. Are you familiar with the photographer's side? Yeah. Like, I, if you gave me a camera, I couldn't do settings or anything, but I'm very aware of what, like, what a camera can do. And because I've modeled for so many workshops, I've kind of got information through mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm like sort of angles and composition in that I'm quite good at because I think about that with my posing. I'm like, oh, if you're going from that angle, this will look better kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to like more technical side, I wouldn't be able to do it at all. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of what I need to know for the modeling. I think I've got the hang of. Yeah. That's perfect. So tell me, you've got, uh, you've got a book, right, an ebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah tell us tell us about yeah, that yes so, <laughs> um well it was this little iso isolation project that i decided to do and it got way out of hand and got a lot bigger than i expected um but yeah so i wrote an ebook which is for photographers um so it's how working with models from a model's perspective um and it goes through everything from like during before the shoot like the pre-shoot communication during the shoot how to work with a model during the shoot and after the shoot um and yeah, I released it a few days ago and I've already sold 70 copies. So I'm really happy oh, with that. It's like oh, way more nice. than I was expecting. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and all the feedback's been really great. And yeah, it's, people are saying it's a really useful tool, which is what I wanted it to be. So yeah, oh, I'm really, really <laughs> stoked with how that's going. I have a link. I think that this that this link will work uh, in the future. I will be a little more prepared with links, but you guys can tell me if this works for you. So um, that should that's the lulu.com. and I think that goes right to your ebook, if I yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think what is it? Eight dollars Australian, which is probably about five or six dollars US. That's free. You in US? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much nothing, <laughs> considering the effort that's gone into it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, it's funny. I, I when we were sort of planning this interview, um, I went and j- just confirmed a couple of Riley's um, uh, Instagram ta- uh, her her name on Instagram, and there it was. the The book was for sale, so I quickly downloaded it and, and had a read myself, and uh, it was good. It's really good. <laughs> oh, that's good. I for that. I didn't have time to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. I was but, uh, um, panicking setting all this up. So that's awesome. No, Definitely, definitely for anybody who's sort of curious how uh, working with a model of sort of any sort of genre within modeling, uh, it sort of helps, particularly when you're yeah. planning a shoot with someone you don't know and they're coming from a different location. It's not like you can just 
you know, get together for a coffee and, okay, we're going to do this. It's, you know, we're on Messenger or Instagram, whatever, and we're just sort of sharing ideas. And um, it, particularly with the communication, really, really does uh, play an important role. I, I'm curious. Yeah, you know, so we, the book's all up. Oh no no great uh, that's what I was going to ask you what what was more about the book about and then and then because from the model right like this is what I'm really interested in and I'm hoping that that you know our our friends here too is that what what's going through the model's mind when you're prepping and and how do you work with somebody and how do you help the photographer do a better job right because you you know. And then you must work with a lot of photographers. So I also got to know, like, where does Craig rank in there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like on a Craig, scale of one to three. High. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy another no, Craig's now. definitely in my top favorite photographers. <laughs> I'll pay you later. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but um, so my book it's centered around communication because I think that's absolute key when working with any person, but especially with a model is communication um, from the moment you contact them for a shoot to, you know, giving photos at the end. It's all ha about having good communication. So that's the sort of center of my book. That's what the main takeaway point is, I guess. Yeah. Hey, Shu, thanks for coming in. That's uh, that is that he's one of my my Twitch mentors. So he's been very cool and in helping me go. And yeah, yeah. Him. Pro, there you go. Yeah. So so it's 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 like it's like, you know, your teachers are here watching you. <laughs> so. Um, but so Raleigh, what kind of advice would you give a photographer? Right. I mean, they, when I teach classes, so I'll give you a little context. So when I'm teaching photography classes, I'm constantly telling the, 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 the photographer, like you have to talk to your models, right? You have to be able to do. So tell us some of your pet peeves, like just, just lay it on us. What do we do that we shouldn't be doing? <laughs> Craig does this. Craig does that. Craig doesn't um, do this. No. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> um, with the pre-shoot communication, it's really important. Like, don't make me milk every little bit of detail out of you. If you just say, this is what's happening, you know, I think that is so useful, especially when you're touring because I'm trying to organize, you know, I've got five days in this city. I'm trying to organize everyone's shoots if I can get to this location in time to get to this shoot, etc. So if you can just give me as much information as you have straight up, it's really useful because it just makes my life so much easier for the organization side. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, is stick to what you discuss. I think some photographers, you know, they discuss the shoots all agreed upon, but then when you get to the actual shoot, they're like, oh, here's a sexy outfit I want you to wear. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was never part of the equation. Um, that's right. So, yeah, I think that's a huge part is good communication beforehand and stick to what you agree on is kind of my main thing. But, yeah, overall, it comes to respect and communication. If you've got those two nails, you're going to have a great time. Right. Do you often take somebody with you? You know, if you're going to go, if you're going to go do a nude shoot, I mean, how do you, so that the tough question, how do you know this guy's safe? How do you know? I mean, how do you plan that? Yeah. So I always, um, like in Australia, Instagram, sort of the main way to book photographers. So if a photographer contacts me, I can go on the Instagram and see who, what models they've worked with. And then I message those models and be like, hey, I saw you work with this person. What do they like to work with? And models are really great. They'll, they'll get back to me within a few hours. And then, you know, so we're always talking. Um, and other, like in Europe, they have a website called Purple Port. And it's actually got a whole lot of like models leave references with photographers. So that's also really good. Um, so yeah, it's just about like doing that before you even agree to the shoot, doing that checkup. Um, and then I don't normally bring people with me just because I'm often touring. I don't even know anyone in that city, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I always make sure I have a lot of communication with them before the shoot. Um, so I can sort of gauge where they are on a creeper scale if they are on that scale. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think having – don't just be like, all right, what time? I'll meet you there. Like have a bit of a back-and-forth chat to sort of get that. Yeah. Um, and obviously I always let someone know where I'm going to be, what time I should be finished. I'll be able to call you when I finish at this time. You know, all that sort of kind of basic stuff. But I think some people – like I know I was starting to get lazy with this because I was like, oh, nothing bad happened. It's fine. And then I was like, no, 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 you can't be lazy. Like you have to do those checks. It doesn't matter. Right. Like every time do the checks. Mm -hmm. Right. Plus, plus, then you're just yeah. not wasting your time, right? Like, if you if you go and you and you get a photographer that you're not going to get good images out of, or you just don't enjoy the experience, like that, you don't want to do that either, right? Like, you want to make sure. So, Roaming Wrangler says yeah. that 
run into bad news photographers. Have you had any, have you had any bad news photographers? <laughs> um, I've never had anything like overly awful. I've had some people I'm like, with, with when I was starting, I think the sort of creeper photographers like to take advantage of newer models because I just started doing art nude and I did a shoot and the guy's like, oh, like every photographer will ask you to do this. Like, this is totally normal. And I was like, oh, okay. Like he's a pro, he knows. Yeah. I've never been asked to do any of that stuff ever again. It was not normal. <laughs> um, so it's stuff like that. Like now because I've got a bit of a name, like people know sort of not to mess with me, I guess, because – yeah, but I think it's it's when you're, you're a newer model that you really have to look out for it because people will take advantage of that sort of innocence, um, which is sad, but it happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so, yeah, and I'm lucky never had anything really bad, but just a few cases I'm like, yeah, this is not, you should not be in this industry. No. no. Well, you know, and Michelle, um, who's now, she's a concert photographer, but she I was talking to her the other day and she said she, that she used to model. You know, she says that uh, I found after years of modeling, you develop a pretty keen intuition as well. And models talk about people who are dodgy. Yep. So that's pretty cool. So you can you can kind of connect. And, and so I'm I'm running a I do a live event <clears throat> that Craig and some of the Twip community know about. Uh, it's F64 Live. We do that in. Well, I hope maybe we can do it in February if if we're allowed to. We don't know. Uh, you guys will be. I don't think we'll be traveling. I don't know. I, we have something canceled, right? Like NAB and some other big yeah. events that were happening, like they're all canceling. So I'm just like, but I have, but I have Twitch now. I have the Twitch community. So I'll just come hang out here and we'll make it all work. Um, but I've got to find models. And I, I tend to find that if I just go like on Model Mayhem or I just search for models, I get like the creepiest women. I don't want them. <laughs> So no. it works both ways, right? Like I need, uh, to figure it out. I need to figure that out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I've never taught in America, so I don't know. Like I feel like each area has their own platforms that they use. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I have no advice for you there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I I would almost suggest maybe you need to reach out to either agencies, um, or yeah, maybe some of the models that Riley knows that work in the States, um, they can sort of contact you. Uh, I, with me, the only there's only a couple of models that I sort of feel comfortable reaching out to directly, and obviously Riley is one of them. Most of the other models that I've been fortunate to work with, because they as soon as they see models, uh, photos of Riley or Sylph or others, they start following you, and then they as they're in Brisbane or coming to Brisbane, they'll contact me as well. So that's sort of how I've built my sort of portfolio with models. Oh, nice. And um, it's more models contacting me. Obviously, they, they want me to hire them. And uh, depending on what the model does, their, you know, their sort of portfolio gives me an idea of, of what they're expecting and um, what they want. And I'll say yes or no uh, as well, you know, if I have the funds available. Well, that's a, that's a good question. What what are rates? I mean, you're going to give you can give it to us in Australian, right? And we, we can convert. Yeah. <laughs> What's the fair rate? So somebody yeah, like I me think looking for models, like what's a fair rate? Um, it does like depend. Like I don't know what each like when I go to Europe, it's a different rate. When I go to Ireland, it's different. Like it really does it depend country. where you're at. So I, yeah, so I don't know what an American model would charge. So yeah, definitely don't take what I'm saying to apply to American models. Um, but yeah, in Australia, for a sort of well-known art nude model would be about 150 an hour, about between 100 and 150 an hour um australian <laughs> yep. so yeah i don't know what that is and also i don't know what the rates are in america but yeah you can a lot of like art new models that travel in america i know they have all their rates on their website so you can easily just go and see what the the going rate yeah. is <laughs> yeah. yeah and typically what they'll do is they'll say this is it's an hourly rate minimum of two hours and then it might give you a a block of four hours is, is this rate or a full day is this rate type thing so Depending on your shoot, depending on where you're traveling to, um, you sort of have to factor in some travel, some uh, 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 rate for travel, and um, just make sure that you're you're prepared with with the funds. Either normally you pay a deposit and then you pay the rest uh, either before or after the shoot. But uh, yeah, you don't want to shortchange the models at all because again, they they do talk and your name will be uh, mentioned if it's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they should. They, they, and they should. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, th this is, uh, it's not an easy job. Uh, and this is why when I sort of have a, a project like this in mind or like the Gateway Bridge, 
I want somebody who I know that can give me the um, the poses and and the looks that I'm after, or that I sort of have you know popping up in my head. And um, somebody who's very experienced is why I hire somebody like Riley. Um, if it was just an up and coming model, it's going to be a TFP shoot, or they they think they know what they're doing. It it just doesn't work. It it'll just take the right. the night just goes. You know, it just becomes too much of an effort. It's fun if you're, you know, just trying to help them get some images for a portfolio, but not when I want to, you know, get my vision out. Right, because you're building your portfolio as well. Yeah. Uh, Chu says, here in Denver, I tell people to start at $120 an hour and minimum booking rate of three hours, even if they don't work that full time. Mm -hmm. So that's that puts us in, in, in the right price range. So that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Three hours uh, is a lot of shooting. I'm probably not going to hire those yeah. models for before because that's like 10 hours <laughs> and I need like 20 models. Yeah. But then you have a, a day rate. Right. So the, rate, the hourly rate comes down. And then if you've got, um, you can have a, a mixture of experienced models and some of that up and coming so that it gives the, the, the newer models, um, they can observe, watch and learn from the experienced models in terms of poses, how to look, um, you know, how to give feedback or how to take direction. Um, I, did a shoot with a model a week or two ago and she's sort of wanting to try this genre and a photographer reached out to me and asked if I could spend a couple hours with her and just sort of, you know, help her build her portfolio. And it was very much a case of, you know, I asked her just to do some subtle move, movements of her head, just to, you know, look to the left, look to the right. And um, again, she's new to this. So she's over exaggerating where she's looking and it's, you've just got to say, right, just slow down. Just yeah. subtle tweaks, not <laughs> all over the place. So. Um, again, it's uh, I'm, I'm fortunate that uh, having done it now for a few years, I've learned a little bit with with reacting or working with models. So I'm I'm happy to you know give a little bit of feedback back where possible. And uh, yeah, it was good fun. I was looking at uh, I was looking at Riley's um, Instagram feed. So let me bring that up. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out which ones of these were Craig's. Uh, I, I get <laughs> one or two. I got uh, one or two. One there. Uh, which one? This uh, one? The other one, no, to the to your right. And oh, the in this, yeah, the black Next. and white to the right. <laughs> Not that one. Next one. No, click off. To be there. That's that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, very nice. So very this was a uh, underwater shoot up in Noosa in the Sunshine Coast. Oh, this is the one that's in. What do you call it? It's like a fairy pool or something. Fairy yeah. pool, correct? Yeah. That's... Yep, fairy pool. You have one on your website, Craig, that I think uh, underwater. Um, that's Riley there. Oh, this is Riley right here? That's Riley there, yep. Yeah, there's a little delay in my scrolling, so <laughs> I'm scrolling back. <laughs> yeah, so extra kudos, Riley, for for doing that. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, no, it was, it was one of my favorite shoots. I love that shoot and the results are beautiful. And, and that was another early morning start as well because it's a two-hour drive north yeah. to the Sunshine Coast and we wanted to be in the, in the water. water at 5 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so we, and, again, there's only so many models that will do stupid things like this and work with me. <laughs> so, stupid things, yeah. I just – I love this. Like, there was another one I saw on your Instagram feed um, – by the way, Riley, I love I love all the shots where you're smiling. Um, you have such <laughs> Thank a, you. You have such a yep. and you're doing it now, and you know we can't we can't see. You. I guess I could bring you up so you can kind of be on the side so we can see you smiling in there. Um, oh, I just I just broke the I just broke it because there we go. Um, but I do I do love that. But there's got to be another one in here. Yeah, Craig. it's funny I. A lot of photographers will be like, oh, models don't normally smile. I'm like, oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> but no. Oh, <laughs> keep, on, keep on scrolling up. Well, I, I wanted to stop here because she's okay, smiling. Okay, yeah, she's got a lovely <laughs> smile. I love that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, like, I like all of them, but I love the fact that, that there's that personable expression in there. Um, if you go back down, you just were above one. It was actually a, a shoot with both Riley and Sylph. That I did, and we did in an apartment oh, yeah. uh, in a villa. Oh, is that the one where they're, she, they're like step, uh, upside down? That one there, uh, yeah. for real. Correct. So this one was so Riley's on the left, Sylph is on the on the right, 
And uh, obviously, I'm inside shooting towards them and still said, hey, let's do handstands. And next thing, these two are doing handstands, giving me poses like this. And um, it was a great shoot. This was a, a, a big shoot that went a lot of planning. This is the one that you did um, in where there's the staircases, right? And you did, you did like, yeah. okay, okay. Are any of those in here? Any of those images in here? I know there's so there's so many. There's so many yeah, there is some. Maybe not on this page, but Riley might have some on another page. Is this yours? They are some there. Oh yeah, that's, that's Craig. Yeah. yeah, that's Craig. I see that. Yeah. So we've got uh, what is it? Mikey says uh, a friend says he hates when models smile, and I want to slap him silly every time he says it. You, you know, maybe that's not maybe that shot isn't what you want to use in your portfolio, but maybe the model's going to really like, it, right? Absolutely. Obviously, yeah. you know, it depends on the shoot. If you're doing a classic, I don't know, abstract art nude pose, a smile's going to look a little bit weird, but yeah. it's good to break it up. Right, right. Perfect. Let me see if I can get back to me. There we go. And then uh, she says, oh, yeah, yeah, not to show implied nudes on Twitch. Their contact guidelines are much more, oh, much more strict than even, even Instagram. I thought that wow. uh, if you get away from Instagram. All right, so. We'll see how that. We'll see how that. <laughs> we'll we'll see figure how it out, time. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all Riley's fault. It is Riley's fault. So, <laughs> looking at okay, and Mikey says, "Yeah, Twitch doesn't play around," um, which is a good thing, right? Like this is mm -hmm. all part of the learning process. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be an art nude discussion, but it's sort of uh, we've got a, a fine art nude model here, so it sort of evolves that way, I guess. Yeah, and you know her her Sorry. Instagram <laughs> implied. No, it's fine. Because that that was one of the things that I was kind of curious about was um, you have to be in shape to do some of these shots, right? Like the implied nude that I maybe I can't show. I should, probably shouldn't show now of uh, of you, you know, pressing up against the pillar and, you know, some of those things. And I thought, oh, man, like you're not just a slap, right? Like <laughs> doing a handstand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Well, I get asked a lot, like, oh, what's your fitness routine? And I, I don't have one. I just have a really good metabolism, to be completely honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do a little bit of yoga. I love hiking and stuff. But the modeling itself keeps me fit. Like, it's it's a solid workout doing a big shoot, especially carrying around my big backpack of props and everything. So, yeah, the modeling itself is sort of my workout. Got it. So what's your what's your routine like to, to be – to be a professional model, what what are you doing? Like, what kind of stuff are you doing to be ready? Whether it's you know, working out, yoga, skin treatments, body conditioning, tanning, you know, I mean, do you do you, do you pamper yourself every day? Be like, oh, I'm going to be ready for Craig's shoot. Oh god, I am so <laughs> low key. Like, I'm a little country farm girl. Um, <laughs> I have no skin routine, none of that. Um, but honestly, if you are, if you do that. Well, great um yeah it's just not not my thing um but yeah tan, i'm very and like i try and avoid tan lines all the time i think that's important if you're doing art nude if you've got big tan lines it just makes it not look as good um so yeah i'll be at the beach i'm like the model and they're hiding under this towel like looking so unattractive um to avoid tan lines um but yeah that's kind of my main Anywhere thing a bit of yoga when i'm feeling it <laughs> so how do you pick a place where you can go do those artistic things? No, it's funny. I just started. What was that, Riley? Yeah. Um, well, oh, sorry. Do you, I'll answer your question. Um, so Australia, we're really lucky because there's a lot of spots where not many people are about. Um, so, yeah, like beaches and sort of, I don't know, a lot of nature spots that we can go and shoot art new that and – People generally don't come along, which is great. That's a good thing. We don't we don't have that. Uh, we don't have that opportunity to do that here. So we just don't have that much openness to be able to do that. So that's that's kind of cool. So and then and then you have to sneak out early, right, Craig? You got to go if you want to get the sun. That's morning for you, right? Sun over the ocean. That's morning. Yeah, morning. Correct. Yeah, I'm on the east coast. Yeah. So the sunrise shoots. It's. Um, at the morning, at the moment, the sun's getting up about uh, 5.30 now, but over summer, it's 4.30, the sun's rising. So it's, um, 
it's an early start depending on where you want to go um, that, and you just you just plan accordingly that's too early i'm not i would it, never see the sun <laughs> but see then you get the opportunity to work with someone like riley and you get to shoot her in you know some beautiful locations and it's it's worth worth the two o'clock mm. start and there's you know there's a stop for coffee along the way and then normally what we do is after our shoot um, we'll go grab breakfast and then drive all the way back. So while I'm having bacon eggs, she's having <laughs> avocado on toast or granola or something like that. And then, yeah, and then off we go. And then oh Craig God. drops me back in my house and I go to sleep for the rest of the day and Craig goes to work. <laughs> so yeah. it's, yeah. Craig has an uh -huh. immense amount of energy. I'm always very impressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does uh hey guys in the in the stream in the chat you guys have questions for Riley hit her up like she's she's here you know she's the the model professional so she's yes. gonna tell us everything that we need to know. <laughs> Riley, but, just mention how many cities or countries you've been to. It's a fair few now. Oh, not not all for modeling, but I have been to forty countries now. So <laughs> I love traveling. So the fact that I have a job that allows me to do that is amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so now that you guys can't, you can't, tr you can't travel very far in Australia though. Right. So how are you able to work right now a little bit? Are you able to do any of that? Um, not really. I've, I've meant to be in Canada right now. I've meant to move to Canada. Um, so that obviously hasn't happened. Um, so yeah, I just, I've been on my parents' farm for the last forever. I think I've done three shoots. So, oh no, I went up, I did tour up to Brisbane, obviously, um, which was great. And then the borders got shut again. So now I'm back here. Um, but I've been doing a lot of self-portrait work and I wrote my ebook. So I've still been doing stuff within the modeling world. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, low base guy has reminded me that, uh, who is it? Roaming Wrangler, which is Thomas. He asked, does Riley steer clear of bending photographers at this point in her career? <laughs> so oh, well, Benning is in Colorado. Where, Benning, Benning, Colorado is where Thomas lives. Oh. Beginning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would love to do an American tour at one point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it's safe, well, you got oh, it. Oh, it's a Gotcha. Yeah, we got to get you here. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, I, I, I want to get out and shoot. Like I had an opportunity to go out and shoot Milky Way the other night, and I thought, you know, it's outside and it's hot, and I don't want to go outside. You guys are in your winter though, right? Yep. Yep, and yeah, it's little girl was <laughs> out there on on big concrete block with nothing on. Thankfully, there was no wind. It, the, the wind had died right down. But uh, yeah, it was. I had a hoodie on, um, so I was nice and warm. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Okay. So I must have. Did I misread his question? Oh yeah. Oh, beginning <laughs> photographers. Beginning photographers. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you gotcha. Beginning photographers. Wait one more time. What was that? Do you steer Be clear of new photographers? Beginning photographers. People that are just starting. Oh. Out. No, not at all. I love working with, like, I love being the first modeling experience a photographer has. Um, I, just, I think if they were to get sort of a more diva model, it might put them off shooting with models, which would be really sad. So I sort of like to be that friendly face that someone shoots with for the first time. Um, and, yes, yeah, so I try to make myself approachable in that way. The only bad thing about shooting with first photographers is it's a bit hard to do that, that background check. Um, but, yeah, that's the only sort of downside, like, I'm yeah, if, as long as they're respectful and everything, I'm more than happy to shoot with newbies. Uh, you know what would be great, uh, Craig, is we need to get mm -hmm. Riley to come on Twit Pro to be the model voice there. We don't have a model voice on Twit sure. Pro community there. That's that's what we need there. Okay, so Riley, <laughs> you need to make yourself available on a Saturday about 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, my office you can just is mobile, imagine. so... <laughs> there you go. So I'll send you an invite. We'll see if we can get you on. But um, you can imagine that the conversation's all going to be centred around Riley. Nobody's going to want to talk about anything other than Riley. <laughs> That's okay. Frederick, uh, if, if Frederick is still here, he can uh, he can send you an invite and get you there. That would be that would be super cool. Yeah, no. I'd be I just another perspective. I think that perspective is is so much fun, and then just to kind of understand, you know, how that's going. Um, 
where I, I where do you want to go next, Riley? What's your next project that you want to do if we weren't in quarantine? Oh, do you have God. <laughs> if um I was meant well, to shoot I'm... in New Zealand. I actually got booked for a week long workshop there, which I was super excited for. Um and it got cancelled because of COVID. So I would love to shoot there. Like it's just amazing, amazing nature. Um and no snakes to worry about, which is very cool. Um so yeah, that that would be awesome. <laughs> How about you, Craig? Uh I wanna shoot penguins in Antarctica. Maybe not what? the next shoot, but I'd, I'd like to do that one at, at some stage. You, you should take Riley with you. <laughs> look, it, it's, it's one thing. To, uh, yeah, it's funny enough. I can tell my wife, look, I'm taking Riley. We're going to go do an art nude shoot at Gateway Bridge. But if I said I'm taking her out for dinner, that would be a different sort of conversation. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll stick with the art Let alone a trip to Antarctica. Let alone a trip to Antarctica. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, one, the workshop that Riley was going to be involved with, uh, that was going to be a big one with uh, how many models? Four models? And then, uh, yeah, four models um, and six photographers, I think. Six photographers, yeah. Yeah, that wow. would have been a fun one to do. Yeah. yeah. I, I There's an image that I want to share, but um, because I'm not entirely sure if I can, I'm going to pop, I'm going to pop a link to. Uh, the oh, you're not going to be able to log in to Twit Pro. Um, Joshua, look at that image and tell me if you think that that's safe. If that's safe, I want to I want to show that. I want to show that image <laughs> of you on the beach, right? What's that? What was that one titled, Craig? Where it's shot from the drone? Uh, ocean birth. Oh, ocean birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. There's nothing showing there. It's just a I sort love of, uh, that her, shot. Her side profile. Um, it says an error occurred. Why is there an error? Why can't I post the link? Oh, we'll see. We'll see if uh, uh, Josh will look at that. Joshua, do you know which one I'm talking about? Um, it's one that uh, that Craig posted in uh, Twit Pro because I think it's I think it's so cool, Craig, that you've got a bunch of your images um, got accepted. Because I think it's I think it's so cool, Craig, that you've got a bunch of your images um, got accepted. In. Was that? I haven't hit anything. You need to mute one of them, I think, Troy. Can you still hear me? I Was can. That? It's coming through on the anything. Twitch stream, I think. You need to mute one of them, I think, Troy. Yeah, I think that's Riley's uh, audio coming through. I can. It's coming through on the Twitch stream, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think that's Riley's uh, audio coming through. Oh, I just had to charge my phone a little bit, so I had to take my headphones out. Is it still working? Yeah. yeah I don't know if it's going through. I'm going to send this to... to yeah. Okay. So, Riley, can you see the Twitch screen? I'm going to send this to, to Joshua. You might yeah, just need to find on the Twitch one where to mute. So Riley, can you see the Twitch stream as well as the yeah. Um no, I can't. Okay. So Riley, so what I did was I went ahead and muted your stream, you know, so that you can go ahead and charge your phone a little bit and then I'll unmute you <laughs> in a in a in a minute so that I can unmute you so that you're not gonna get that um echo back and forth. And did I send that to? Okay, so uh, Roaming Wrangler has a question: Is Craig shooting recent projects with Riley using his new Olympus, or is he using his Five D Mark Three? Five D Mark Three. I don't have any um, glass fast enough for the Riley shoot on the Gateway Bridge, uh, and I don't think my Olympus camera is good enough for low light. Um, plus I don't want to be experimenting with new cameras, uh, on a shoot like that. That's something I'll do, you know, one night I'll go I'll walk around the city or whatever, but with, with the gateway bridge shots, uh, I started off with a 15 to 30, uh, 2.8, uh, then I switched to a 24 to 70, 2.8, and then a 70 to 200, 2.8. So shooting between 2.8 and about 3.5 aperture. And my ISO was around about, uh, between 2,000 and 2,500 ISO. So probably oh. a little bit high for the 
Mark III. Um, and, and even though shutter speeds were quite slow, I had, we had some that were you know approaching half a second. So uh, quite a lot of what I was yelling out to Riley was just, okay, hold that pose and just stand still. And I'd take a, a few shots. The ones there, like that one there sitting down, um, she was able to obviously hold that pose quite well. And um, full credit, that was her idea. She goes, oh, can I sit down with a dress? And then just sort of positioned her uh, in between the two towers. And I sort of shuffle around myself. And then uh, we got that. Wow. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of my favorite. Yeah, so yeah. Joshua just came back and said, I can't show that. I shouldn't show that. Okay. Image. So, yeah, um, but I did put the link in the chat. So if you guys get a chance, go check that out. Um, oh, I can't. I don't know how I can do that because it's on Twit Pro. Do you have that on? Do you have that image on your website? Maybe it's not on my website, but I think it's possibly in my Instagram. I'll have a quick look. I know there was a there is a version on there, but I can post a new one soon. Uh, oh no, it's the first. It's the one because that particular image. Um, I submitted four images in the people category to the uh, the Mono Awards, which is a black and white uh, competition for Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, and, um, I ended up with one commended, two highly commended, and then that one of Riley is in the top ten. Wow! So I'm pretty, pretty happy yeah. about that. I love this one where she's just sitting there. This is very yeah. cool. Um, Riley, how's that? How's that phone doing, Riley? Do we want to get you back on there? I'm going to try to. I'm going to bring us back, and then if you plug in your headset, then I will unmute your microphone. And I will unmute your microphone. <laughs> I think okay, we've still got just food. Quickly checking: is that working or not? I think we've still got food. Oh. Yeah, we have a bit of a delay. Yeah. Yeah. So Riley's in New okay, South Wales. I'm good. in Brisbane, and you're in California. I, you know, isn't that like the coolest thing ever? We're like all halfway around the world, and we're having this conversation, which I just think is like super. Is this cool. working? Yes. Great. Uh, Joshua is asking, "What would be your dream shoot, Riley?" Definitely. What would be your dream Getting some lag. Uh, oh, um, definitely somewhere just epic in nature. I think. Um, oh, is it working? Yep. There. We. Yeah. We have quite a bit of a delay. Yeah. Uh, Riley, if you want to, you can probably turn off the uh, the Twitch stream and just stay on the the Streamyard one if you want to. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. You don't need to worry when any uh, sort of questions that come up for you, um, Troy can ask you. Yeah. Bandwidth. That darn bandwidth. Um I can't I, I'm not actually seeing any of the questions at the moment, so I don't Okay, so in your browser, are you looking at StreamYard.com or Twitch.tv? Um, oh, sorry, guys. It's all right. Yeah. I don't do this all the time. I'm so at StreamYard.com. Okay, so is there another browser up for uh, Twitch? Or just the one browser? Um, no. Okay, I'm not sure why you've got that feedback loop then, Troy. I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. But I'm hold on. Not that I'm seeing. I'm on my phone. Um, so it might be different. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think so. Um, yeah. See, I was gonna go over here. You know, you know, Craig, all of the big lag that I want to show no lag. are implied nudes that I probably can't get away with now. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Well, definitely, there was, it was nice with the wedding dresses. Uh, definitely, the crops with uh, the the pose with Riley leaning against the, the tower. Um, that's one of my favourites. And there's a couple other poses that she did. And um, again, they're artistic in nature. They're not supposed to be um, explicit in any way. But uh, you know, the feminine form against something um, you know immovable like that object. 
I, I just thought it worked really, really well. Yeah. So Craig, when you're when you're doing these kind of shoots, like obviously you're mixing those two forms it did. together. Oh, are we there? Do, are we working, Riley? Can we? Yeah, it's quite a delay on here. I just gonna test. Can you hear me, or am I still super delayed? No, you seem yeah. good there now. Sorry, guys. That's no, no. all right. That's all right. No, we're good. Oh, okay. Good. It um, seems to be good now. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say I, the contrast between like uh, the contrast between like sort of nude body with all the organic curves looks really good. That contrasted with the big sort of structure of the bridge. I think that worked really well with the art nude ones. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But Twitch is more prudish than the Amish. <laughs> <says Chuck. laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty good. Well, considering considering that uh, Riley's phone is probably going to die again, uh, we can go ahead and wrap it up if you like. You know, no, it's it's good. We've gotten through a lot. This has been a lot of fun. This has been a good first. I mean, it's. I hope. I hope it has been good for everybody else. But uh, it's been fun for me to do our first Twitch stream, and super big thank you to Riley for being here. And Craig, for sure. I, Craig, we, Craig, Craig and I give each other a hard time. And, and it's funny, when I first met Craig, we used to do these member mixers. I think we did them in the morning. And Craig would come on the microphone oh, yeah. at 5 a.m. Craig's time. And he'd be like, oh, quiet. And he'd have his, he'd have his coffee. And I just thought, man, this guy's like really quiet. And then we moved. Uh, <laughs> PMR time, which was afternoon his time. And he's like, hey guys, and he's got his beer going. And he's. <laughs> I, was, I was quite because my wife and kids were fast asleep upstairs at five o'clock in the morning. Even I should have been asleep at five o'clock in the morning. So now it's yeah. 11 o'clock and I'm awake. Everybody's awake. That's the dog's awesome. awake. I don't think yeah, she's in uh, rural uh, rural New South Wales at the moment, so um, internet's probably not the fastest out in the farm, so she'll be yeah. relying on cellular for that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I'm watching. I can see her little thumbnail in there, and it looks like she's she's out now. Okay. okay. I felt bad. I did want to keep her in, you know, yeah. and like, <laughs> keep doing it. Um, what a sweetheart. Like, she is just so yeah. And and it, this is the sort of I enjoy working with her because she's just a really nice person to begin with. So the um, you, you get to know these people, you get to know her as an individual, particularly on the long drives. You know where we've got a couple of hours. You know we're going to a location or wherever. So find yeah. out where she's going, what's going on, how she's doing at uni. She's you know after she finished, she went uh, back to South Africa for about a couple of months, a few months to finish off her studies there, and then she was back. So, you know, just a, a genuinely nice person and just a delightful yeah. model to work with, you know. A lot yeah. a lot of the poses on the bridge, she's coming up with those. Um, she's, really? you know, yeah, yeah, because, again, I'm, I'm quite far away. And so I could say, you know, yell out, you know, do that again or, you know, subtly change this. But for the most part, I'm just telling her to hold a pose. Uh, yep, yeah, do that, just stop, stop, and I'll take a few photos. And then, uh, all right, off you go. I just love that. That is just mm. so cool. And it shows scale. It shows how it shows how um, big that bridge is. Yeah. Oh, it, Michelle says the internet isn't the fastest in Australia, period. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. But this this is this is great. Did you have to do any Photoshop work to this? Um, was there any graffiti or anything like that? There was a, there's a little bit of graffiti on that lower panel to her right. Uh, and what I didn't see from from the rocks from where I was shooting was all the broken concrete and bits of rock that were actually scattered all around the the base there where she's walking. And she told me afterwards it was actually quite a bit of broken glass as well. Oh, um, okay. yeah. So she had to be very careful where she was walking. Uh, but I, you know, I photoshopped a little bit of the. In fact, directly above her was a sign that it had been removed, so there was still like the glue that had stuck it on. Um, so I photoshopped that out. I just I, I, literally just um, a couple of feet above her head. Yeah, no, I was just looking at that yeah. whole structure. I mean, you know, could go in there. And if you watch a uh, shoe stream, they'll mm -hmm. show you how to retouch all that. Right. Okay. 
which is what he was doing. Yeah, um, some of it I sort of blurred out. Some of it I moved a panel down and sort of blended it in. Uh, it wasn't very obvious graffiti. You could see where they've tried to scrub it off, so you couldn't read anything. It was sort of a bit mottled, and I just sort of played with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Between between the you know all of these shots, I think the one of her, I think the one of her sitting, is mm -hmm. probably my is probably yeah. my favorite. Um, yeah, very gracious, just very. I would very crop, serene. I would crop it like that though. Okay. That's how I would crop it because I know you okay. asked. So. <laughs> well, I tend to shoot wide, and you like to shoot tight. I I do I do yeah. you know I'm really used to doing that yeah. And there was a few of the comments that a um, few people commented on some of the the highlights, particularly those light streaks just to her right. So I sort of uh, you know taken on board what people have said, and I've just sort of played with the uh, played with the files and sort of burnt them down a little bit. And uh, yeah. You know, some of these uh, images, you can just sort of keep on playing with them and playing with them and playing with them. Um, and I think a... I'm probably fairly happy with these now. Okay. I had to, I sorry, I had to lean over and look at the image real close to make sure that it, that it was okay. <laughs> sure. I think there was only one art nude in, in this lot. Yeah. 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 This is really cool. This one. Oh my gosh. The, with her sitting right there and yeah. like, I know I, I'm messing with your art. I'm just. No, no, that's cool. I just, I love that. I love all that shape. And it's, it was so fortunate that you had that opening right there, you know, right and there where she's at. Once she sat down, then I shuffled across either left or right to make sure that she was in that, that spot. Cause there's a few obviously where she's sort of in between the, the pillars and, and what have you. But um, for some of these ones where she was standing still or sitting down, um, I would get her to stop. Then I would move around because uh, I was shooting on a tripod as well. Um, and just get her to right. We'll just position her in that blank, blank area, and then actually remove some of the lights and stuff that was actually behind that. There was a a building way off in the in the background, so I just uh, removed that in in Photoshop. And she's pointing her toes, right? Is that that's that's yes. what? It yeah, she's yeah. pointing her toes. But there is actually a, like a a tie down hook right where she sort of got one of her feet. But yeah, she's pointing her toes. And this is the um, her dance background again, and her. Yeah her uh, awareness of what her figure is doing, whether it's her hands or her feet, um, they're not just flat. They're actually very, very graceful. And um, again, why you, you you pay money for models like this because you get great results. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Those are the kind of things that I, I just absolutely love in an image. That's yeah. how you get that last 10% where Correct. you go, um, oh, this is a really great image too. This is freaking amazing. Yeah, right. And it's I that. didn't have to. I didn't have to ask her to do that. She knows to do that. She knows what's um, required. See, that it, it comes naturally to her. That's not fair. That is not. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. that is totally unfair. I, no. I <laughs> and and you can you can hopefully appreciate that I'm not actually seeing a lot of the detail until I get it on my screen and I can blow it up and I can see what she's done um, from where I was sitting. You know, looking through a viewfinder, looking at the back of the screen. It's very difficult to make out all that detail of you know what her feet are doing or how she's holding her hands. Yeah, she. I just I just yelled out, "Stop! Just hold that for a sec. Take two or three photos, and then right, okay, try something else or, or move. Okay, you can relax now." But this um, is how this is how we learn as photographers is that I you know everybody asks like when I'm teaching classes and stuff like how do I learn how to pose as a photographer? Mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, how do how do you learn how to pose somebody? Like what poses are good? I'm like, well, just watch people. Go yeah. to the park and watch a couple walking together how they hold hands like that's how you pose them um and maybe it's i have you to want it to feel natural yeah and it can be a little creepy and uh kira <laughs> knows that i'll be sitting like when we could go to restaurants i would yeah. be sitting and i would i would get quiet because i'm watching somebody and sometimes it's a couple that come in and and they're just the way that they're sitting or the way that they snuggle together, the way that they do something like that. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that is, that is an amazing, absolutely amazing pose. Um, and I think men are probably the harder ones to pose. Men tend to be more self-conscious, you know, you know, give me a smile and men don't, I, I like, I'm terrible at smiling. Uh, whereas I, on several occasions on a shoot with Riley, I'll always take a couple of headshots, a couple of nice little portraits and I'll just say, Right, give me a smile, and then she just can't help but give a, a beautiful smile. Yeah, and you, you know you get these sharp eyes, you've, and you've got this lovely smile, and then right off off we go, and 
we had one shoot where we were walking back to the car and uh, there was a couple of guys getting out of, out of the surf and I said, oh, come, let's come down here. So I just walked up to one of the guys. I said, can she just borrow your surfboard for a second? And uh, he sort of looks at me. I said, look, I've got a camera and she's got a bikini. Do you mind? He goes, oh, no, not at all. So next thing, you know, she's posing with a, with a you know, big Malibu. And we've started to get a bit of a crowd around us because there's a, you know, a beautiful woman with a surfboard. And right. everybody's stopping to watch, you know. They couldn't care less about me, <laughs> which is how it should be. And uh, we had a, you know, a surfboard in the in a photo shoot for you know a few minutes, and then off we went. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and curious. she can react like that, you know. She can, you can just say, "Oh, let's try this," and it very much, you know. She, we talked about we plan the shoot, and this is we stick to the shoot. But when it's something impromptu or um, it's something that we can both sort of react to, um, she's she's fine with that. Uh, I've never been, I've never been really comfortable. Like if I'm the wedding photographer on the day, like I can, I can ask anybody to do anything, anywhere, yep. move grandma. You've got that superpower with the camera. But when I'm out in the world, I'm doing like, you know, my landscapey stuff or I'm taking portraits on the beach. I'm in like a public space. I have such a hard time with breaking into somebody else's bubble. Right. And like, can I borrow that or can, can yeah. we do that? Um, or can I photograph you? Uh, I've never been, I've never been really great at that. I don't think I can go up to people and say, can I photograph you? Um, I have over the last couple of months when I've, you know, in between shoots, I'm grabbing a hamburger or something at McDonald's or what have you. If, if whoever's giving me my meal or taking my money has a really beautiful smile, I've, I've said it recently to a couple of, couple of um, women that you have a really beautiful smile. And then you just see the smile get even bigger. And, I, and I'm doing it genuinely. I'm not trying to say, here's my card, give me a call. I'm not interested in that at all. But I'm slowly getting out of my little 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 box and complimenting people genuinely when I when I can. Um, I, I, but, I can talk to anybody. Yeah. That's not a problem. And <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, uh, Kira, uh, when we were talking about me looking off, Kira says, uh, it happens when we watch movies too. He pauses, oh, yeah. always finding scenes. That would be an awesome photo. There you go. There you go. So you can justify that movie at the cinema as a job expense, as a business expense. Yeah. Because you were doing research. Yeah. 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 The King's Speech. If you want to see an amazing movie. lit movie, turn the sound off. That in like 300. Just just yeah. let the movie just let the movie play. Yeah. But I went to a, a photography seminar many, many years ago from a guy, a gentleman named uh, David Peters, who's a photographer up in Northern California here. And during this little workshop we did, he says, um, he says, I want you guys at lunch. I want you to go learn somebody's dream. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, my God, there is no way I'm going to be able to do that. And I, so we're sitting at lunch and there's like four or five of us and we're all teasing each other to be the first one to go. And the waitress comes over and she takes her order and we're chatting and I'm pretty chatty anyway. And I look up at her and I go, I go, Hey, thanks. You're doing a great job. I said, what do you do when you're not here? <laughs> oh my gosh. She was, well, you know, I'm going to school to be a nurse and uh, you know, this is, I'm just trying to work my way through that. It was the best service. Awesome. She was just this amazing human. We were friends the whole time we were there. And that's what I, that's what we do now. Like you go out into the world, you see somebody, maybe you see them a couple times, just say, Hey, what do you, what do you do when you're not here? Yeah. They, they love that. It's that yeah. human factor, right? You've got to have that human factor. And it's still a genuine curiosity. You're not doing it to, to be spiteful or just to embarrass them. Um, it's, you know, naturally inquisitive and they appreciate it. We all would. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I would. Nobody compliments me on anything. No, <laughs> no. it's it's as no, a not as, at all. <laughs> as a photographer, it's really hard for me to like my own work. Um, it's funny, you know, with, with that link I sent for the the People's Choice, I've liked everybody else's but my own. I, I won't click the link on mine. So if I lose by one, it's my fault. But uh, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm not going to click on my own. Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, you know, we're our biggest critic, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> and of course, David gives me a compliment right away. Thanks, David. F stop, Dave. <laughs> Great job. Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah. Put this all together on a shoestring. Yeah. Kiki says uh, every photographer hates their own work 80% of the time. 
I think that's true. Otherwise, otherwise, um, what would drive us to be better? That, and we probably spend more time looking at it than anybody else. So you start seeing the little flaws. You see, oh, I should have moved that, or the model's pose wasn't quite right, or whatever. We spend, you know, we're looking at it in such great detail where people judging or critiquing photos, you look at it quickly and then, oh, yeah, I don't like that crop and Craig should have centered it and it should have been off to that side. And it's, why didn't you go black and white? There's no key line, no border, blah, 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 blah. Next. Yeah. 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 And then I, I just watch my little heart just get crushed and ripped apart. Well, you know, I don't, I don't do any of the selling. So I'm I'm really spoiled in that uh, Margie, my wife, for those that don't yeah. know, she does all the selling, which is so much better that she does that. Because if I had to sell, I would be like, well, yeah, just anything you like. You know, yeah. it's hard for me to ask for money for my art. That's the absolutely hardest that argument. is the hard part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have to remember we're running businesses that just happen to make photos. Yeah, who was it? Somebody somebody said, I'm not a photographer. I'm a businessman that does photography. Yeah. And I really yeah. hate that. I really hate that. I'm well, not you're, you're, you're in the enviable position where you can concentrate on the photography and your better half can do the the really hard part of actually selling it. Yeah. yeah. And I struggle with selling my own stuff, but I'll happily promote and sell anybody else's. And, and that's what I was like when I had my, you know, had a real job years ago in, in uh, prior life. Um, right. I didn't want to be, I was associated with that company, but it's not me. This is their tools. This is how we use it. And they're the best in the world. Right. And now I have photos and yeah, they're pretty cool. Next, I, don't think I, ever had, I don't think I've ever had a real job. I've always been self-employed. So I get, right. I get very spoiled with, with this idea. Yeah. My, my, my dad was always self-employed and then I, had, I guess I had a job for a little while. I don't remember. I think I worked at like Kmart or something for like a year. And then, uh, and then, and then I'm like, I hate working for people. I, I'm not good with authority. I'm not good with being told. With <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> no, fair enough. Yeah, no. For me, I've only been self-employed for about the last five and a half years. Prior to that, I I worked for companies. So how how has photographing models like working with Riley? Mm. How has that helped your your ability to generate money? Right, like how how has that helped you? I think it proves that uh, I mean, because typically with with commercial stuff, real estate stuff, it's not high end dollars. It's not um, art typically. Uh, you know, I, I do occasionally get to photograph some absolutely stunning homes and apartments and things like that, but it's not something that I can then personally sell myself. And nobody's going to buy a photo of a or whatever. But right. it's given me the opportunity to be more creative. Um, and at least when I'm talking to people and they sort of ask me, what do I do outside of, uh, real estate or architecture or whatever, I can say, oh, well, occasionally I work with models and, you know, I, this is a recent shoot and show them photos like the gateway bridge or the one in the villa or, you know, the underwater stuff that I do. And, um, it, it helps me boost myself so I can say that, no, I'm not just this category photographer. I do this, 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 and this and um starting to either get known or appreciated or people are contacting me because they want a underwater portrait or they want to you know can you take me out to one of these locations and photograph me that sort of stuff so yeah. it's a bit of a, a a little bit of an ego boost at times which i don't i as i mentioned the other i don't really like promoting myself but it's nice to talk about a photo or at least talk about an experience with a uh, with a model, you know, we had a, a really great shoot and look at look at this image of here's this tiny little woman in against this huge structure and They can sort of see or understand what I was trying to do with a photo So I can get a yeah. little bit excited about that rather than saying I'm Craig Stanfley and I saw photos that that I struggle with Do you think you could have done this this shot? three years ago uh, No, 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 I don't think so. I really? would I still have I'll have the equipment, but I wouldn't have had the the vision or the um probably the the really true understanding of how to edit it that way i've found my editing has improved mm -hmm. um over the years as you know as, as most of us as well um now i sort of get ideas in my head and, and how do i get them out and it's a little bit easier now than it was a few years ago and particularly working with models only started about four years ago four and a half years ago 
So yeah, I, before that, I never really wanted to work with people. You know, I never <laughs> wanted to do weddings. I never wanted to do headshots. And, um, you know, one of my first weddings was the other side of the world, which I never, ever thought would ever be possible. And it was an amazing experience and came to really enjoy doing, you know, weddings. Um, I've had one of my brides jump in, in my pool in her wedding dress after sort of, you know, sneakily telling her, what are you doing with that dress after the wedding? Uh, she said, oh, nothing. I'll ever wear it again. I said, well, would you consider doing this? And um, when I explained what I wanted her to do, um, she was all over it. And I kept getting emails from her until it was finally warm enough um, that I could bring her over or she could come over and we got her in my pool. Man, that's, yeah, that's really super cool. Yeah. I, you have to be familiar with your gear. You got to spend time with your gear and you got to get out there and you got to have hands on it. And that's, I think that that's, that's, missed so often and that's the thing that frustrates me about seeing camera reviews and stuff online where somebody goes out it's like oh so here's the camera with the best eye autofocus and they spend yeah. 30 minutes running this test and yeah. that means nothing in the real world right no. that's that's nothing and then being able to finish your image i think is is huge i watched uh, Michelle's stream and then uh shoe and then even even uh and and Joshua's low base guy mm. The images that they start with is only um, a beginning of what it can end up being, you know, yeah. because you tone on it and then you have all that, that uh, amazing emotion that you can pour into it by cropping or going mm. on automatic or. It's you know. I could probably share within the community. I could probably share some of the original roars just to say, this is what it started off with. And uh, this, <laughs> this is what it ended up with after lots of fiddling. But yeah. sort of, again, knowing what the software can do because you've, you, you you have an idea in your head and these I knew were always going to be black and white, particularly after the first shoot a few months ago. Um, uh, so, yeah, sort of having an understanding of what the software does, what the camera is capable of, uh, knowing sort of the limits of uh, the ISO and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, made it, I won't say challenging. Uh, just You just have to think quickly, okay, I need to be able to, all right, just stop for a second, Riley. Let me take a couple of photos. Right, let's try this again. You quickly zoom in and you inspect it. So, yep, that's that's feasible. And what's a little bit soft? I know that uh, Topaz uh, sharpener will, will fix <laughs> yeah, yeah, Topaz stuff is like that. Right. So, absolutely. So you need to do a shoot here with uh, with a male model now. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Don't know how you, you feel looking at a wedding dress, but uh, oh well, no, uh, that would be funny though. White um, white tails. Yeah, no, but you know, because because it'll change the shot, it'll change this image so much. Because you know, with having the feminine form and the female mm -hmm. form in there, uh, you know, it it changes the way that the bridge itself looks and the pillars look. And then you're going to put like you know a male model in there or somebody very physical, mm -hmm. uh, or a female model that's very physical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It changes that, right? Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, that would be that would be super cool. And um, I'd happily go back to this area and do it again. Um, I'd probably rent uh, a newer camera with a you know slightly better ISO, uh, high ISO uh, handling, just so I could shoot a little bit faster. Um, R but no, so the R5 is supposed to be the R5. Was, yeah, yeah, the yeah. R5 and the R5 Michelle says she'd different. love to see more nude modeling. Uh, to be honest, the female stuff is saturated. More male art nude modeling. Yep, yep, yeah. I I agree. Yeah. I, I've got no problem with it. If if a, a male model wanted to photograph me to photograph him, I'd, I'd I'd consider it. The um, you just don't get as many men uh, models, I guess. Um, I can't say I've ever been asked by a model, a, a male model, to be photographed. It's all females that, that contact me. Michelle says Matt Hickey to model. Yeah, whoever. Yeah, as long as you can get there. Uh, name sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah, Matt. Does Matt not want to do it? <laughs> Matt doesn't want to do it. There you go. Well, I think that uh, I think that that location is is super cool. So, and you definitely need to do that. Yeah, yeah, no problems. Even a couple out there would be fun. So yeah. I, I could see this now as uh, during the day for a wedding shoot, for a proper wedding shoot, getting the couple out there posing for 20, 30 minutes would be good fun. I'm just jealous that you can even go do that. Like we, we used to have some really amazing locations around here. Um, 
but where we are, it's a little bit overbuilt. We're not like in LA city proper or San Diego. Um, we're outside of that, but you know, our parks, our parks are crap. Like they're just not beautiful. I got to pay to shoot there. And there's just, there's just nothing really cool there. The fact that you sure. have that ability. Yeah. All my favorite spots are gone. Right. So, so we got to move. It's time. No, fair enough. <laughs> well, eventually you'll be able to come to Australia. Yes. Move down here. I mean, we've got a population of, I don't know, 28 million, 27 million. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got a fair bit of space. <laughs> I, I looked it up. I think, I think the population of California exceeds the population of all of us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys are like, what, 35, 40 million? I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's bigger than all of Australia. Correct. Yeah. And Brisbane's probably per, uh, Australia's third or fourth largest city. So you've got Sydney and Melbourne. And then probably Perth or Brisbane for two or three, or three or four. Yeah. See, what we'll do is is we'll come out for mm -hmm. your spring mm -hmm. and hang out, get an Airbnb, stay for like no three problem. months, travel Easy. around, get to yeah. see everybody when there's yeah. no flies. Can we do that when there's no flies? Yeah, we can work around it. Yeah, it's not <laughs> always bad. And we'll get Riley and a couple of the other models that I know. We'll uh, we'll organize a shoot. Yeah, Kira. Well, Kira can can step away from snakes and not go near spiders. But if the insects come to her, okay, uh, she won't come at all. We we will lather her in uh, Aragard, tropical strength. <laughs> That'll help keep them away. <laughs> and then there is hair nets that we can put, or fly nets, I should say, to to cover her. Kira says, I've used those several times. I'm out when the bugs arrive. Oh no, no, you don't, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That trip to Australia might be very, very short. There's a small window when there's no bugs, no bites. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to. We'll definitely have to plan it. Maybe it's winter. Maybe we just have to go in winter when there's going to be far less bugs. Like mm -hmm. Kira, you need to do the research to find out when it is that we need to be there, and then that's when we'll plan it. Okay, and you want to probably look so as far north as Cairns, so you get the tropical rainforest north effect. All the way down to, we'll say the central coast where Mark uh, uh, Mark Charette is. So you've got just north of Sydney, or even just down to Sydney. So from Cairns to Sydney, pick a couple of spots along that uh, east coast, because that's the Pacific Ocean. This way, you can say you've shot a, a sunrise on the Pacific Ocean. I'd have to wake up. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah, but I winter it's not quite so. The time so zone. Scary. The time zone. So. It's 17 hours. I can't even yeah. figure it out. We're 17 ahead. So it's now 1.30 to your 8.30. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe uh, I can figure it out. It work. I, if it I'm nocturnal, work. so maybe my, my nocturnal cycle will be your regular cycle. Well, in that, okay. Uh, we may have to try and figure out when. So at the moment, we're just coming to the end of the really good Milky Way season in Australia. So you got no bugs yeah. when it's cool, Milky Way, East Coast. So a few things for Kira to try and organize. Oh, so. And August. I'll take you out to Narrabri in New South Wales where the uh, telescopes are. <gasps> that would be amazing. Yeah. So that will be on a Saturday when there's no moon. What is it? Great American Portrait says, there is no time that killer bugs aren't after you. Um, <laughs> seven <laughs> or, or nine deadliest spiders in the world but don't let that stop. you just no, ruined it for kira oh don't let that stop you <laughs> no we hardly ever see any i did have a flock of cockatoos on my upper deck this morning that were waiting for waiting to be fed so while i was making coffee i had to go out and give them some bird food some seeds oh. and some pieces we'll have to we'll have to get like three people to escort kira around we so, can do that. yeah yeah I'll, I'll stick my hand up i'll happily volunteer <laughs> Kara says, don't lie to me, Craig. Absolutely not. Uh, hand on heart with uh, this side, that side. Um, happily look after you. Now, Australia is a wonderful, wonderful place. I do want to go. Uh, you know, it's yeah. funny. Uh, Peter travels all over the world, okay. right? Like Burma and, and yeah. just Singapore and Papua New Guinea and like all these places. And one of the places that, that he keeps asking me is like, where do you want to go? I said, well, I want to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's got what do you got like seven 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 of the twelve temperate zones and oh, we, we really have it all down here we're pretty spoiled yeah yeah oh and crocodiles at the beach <laughs> not that often but <laughs> okay so that's further north 
So I, I will say one little story. When I lived in Darwin in the Northern Territory, uh, my wife and I were there for about 12 months when we were newly married. And um, so it's the far north. It's, um, you know, crocodile country, all that sort of stuff. And you do have the box jellyfish and you also have the saltwater crocodiles. And there is about a m three or four weeks of the year when the crocs haven't come in and the jellyfish have left where you can actually go to the beach and go swimming. And um, the little place where I, we, we were living, my father, he was on his way back to South America and he actually flew up and spent a few days with us. And uh, we actually just walked down to the beach and we just sort of sat in this warm brown water to cool off and uh, sort of say, okay, you know, we've, we've gone swimming at the beach and it's a case of, well, we better get out because who knows if there's a crocodile or a box jellyfish that wants to kill us and they just be wandered back to the house. So um, just, other parts of Australia, it's not quite so bad. See, Joshua wants to be there to go after all the snakes and spiders. Yeah. So Joshua will have to go with this because wherever he's photographing is where Kira and probably me will stay away. Fair well, what we can do is we'll go to Australia Zoo. That's only about an hour and a half north from where I live. So we can go and spend the day at, at um, Australia Zoo and we can see all the some of the crocodiles and some of the other snakes and bits and pieces and get um, that sort of experience. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Who is who is Great American Portraits? Do I know? Do I know you? Do I know who that is? I don't know if I know who that is. See, everybody has these avatar names and some of them are mm -hmm. not sure who everybody is. <laughs> Whereas I'm just... Craig Stanfley, I'm not very imaginative there. I'll let my brain start thinking of other things. The username, I'll just go with what I know, what comes easy. Oh, no, I. that's why I went with Spicy Jello because yeah. that'll, that'll be good. And then I created for my bot whenever I get it working. Um, it's it's uh, it's called Spicy Bot Says. That's my next, that's my username for my bot. Cool. I've got so much to set up. I, so much. You fool, can't salt and salt. Oh. Oh, Great American, that's Dwayne. Okay. I knew I knew Great American Portraits, but it didn't click. Right. So, uh, Dwayne is a local photographer friend of mine from one of Very our local cool. organizations, and I know him. And I'm the one, I built a table for him. Oh, sweet. That yeah. With the olive wood? Uh, with the olive wood, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's sitting in his office or in his Very cell. cool. So, Very cool. Yeah, that's a beautiful table. Yeah, I would. I think so. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you. But it was. But it was. So I could. I could uh, make stuff for you. But I did. Okay, I have a question for you, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll wrap up here. Yeah, no um, if I want to send a package to mm -hmm. all my friends in Australia, because mm -hmm. I want to send some stuff to like Michelle, I want to send some stuff to you, and and yeah. even Riley and some others. Yeah. How can you can you ship? uh internet i mean not internationally um domestically nationally. domestically nationally. yeah can you yeah, still yeah. Oh, okay yeah send it to me and i'll forward on to wherever yeah easy ah uh, okay okay yeah no problems at all perfect okay now yeah. that i got because i i talked to uh i talked to uh peter and i said hey how can we do that he goes well if we're gonna send a package we're gonna send a really big one <laughs> okay yeah no send it to me and i can always go and pick it up from the courier or have it you know i can get a courier to myself or whatever no 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 problem at all and then yeah. if it's an individual packets within, I can just forward it on. No problem. Oh, okay. I will collaborate with you and we will figure out how to do that. Easy. Uh, Joshua says he's still waiting on me to build him a desk. Well, I, it I looks like the one he built himself is pretty good. Yeah. He doesn't need one from you. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Uh, Frederick says, don't we need a post office here to ship stuff? <laughs> <laughs> oh. We don't actually. Oh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I yeah let's we, talk about this mid-november when we know what the results are oh my gosh oh my gosh might know a result by then whatever it's you know what i look at it like i i cannot fix it right like like if it was a broken vehicle i could go out and i could change a spark plug and i could yeah. fix it i'd be like all in this is no i sit back and go Ooh. But where are the grown-ups in the room that should know how to fix this? They seem to be leaving. You know, it's like turning a blind eye. It's like watching NASCAR. We don't necessarily watch it for the crashes. <laughs> oh, that's oh. quite real, right? <laughs> I, I 
I told uh, actually I said this to Frederick the other day. I was listening to one of my one of the podcasts I listened to, and the guy said that the world is watching America like America watched Tiger King. <laughs> God. And I had to stop and actually pull over and think about that. And I thought, yeah, that's actually quite accurate. We're just watching. It's like we're just about nearly out of popcorn by what's going on in the States. You know what? We're just taking turns, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. It's your turn. It's our turn. It's the next yeah. turn. Um, yeah, we had know. the bushfire. And funnily enough, they announced that the bushfire season is probably going to be starting a little bit early. So <laughs> we've got that to look forward to. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. I would, you guys just finished the whole fire thing and then the COVID thing starts. Yeah. Now you're going yeah. back into the fire. Well, you burned everything, so you should be okay, right? Yeah, comes, yeah but other parts need to burn now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're a big country. <laughs> we got lots of stuff to burn. Didn't quite did. get it all last time. The whole, the whole jelly center is empty. There's nothing going on yeah, there. There's not much there apart from a red rock. And funnily enough, we're not allowed to climb it anymore and I don't think I could shoot a model on the top of that i think that would be a big no-no well you got a lot of you got a lot of good stuff to go photograph and you got some cool models so yeah i've got a few ideas brewing and again it's just sort of time and once sort of borders open up again um how to get to certain places and then sort of planning around the distances so fortunately i'm a relatively friendly person so the models and or whoever i'm with we can we can actually normally chat and um, get to know each other that way. So it actually makes it quite fun rather than two people meeting up at a at a car park and, right, let's go over here. You know. Yeah. Half, half the time, it's nice to actually have that drive and just sort of get to know the person. And then for me, it's a little bit more comfortable when they're starting to, you know, disrobe and I've got to take photos of them. I actually sort of know them already. It's not like it's a new person. Then I don't feel like a stalker. <laughs> okay Dwayne says uh spicy haven't you noticed all the local fires yeah we do have quite a few local fires okay. um and and Joshua we've got lots of stuff to burn is pretty much the world theme <laughs> at the moment yeah <laughs> yeah not wrong yeah not wrong yeah I know I know oh. well all right guys hey let's wrap it up um Craig thanks for uh thanks for being here for the main well thank you for asking and I'm glad you guys like the photos and yeah. um, hope those that can will go and look at the the drone shot I took of Riley on the beach. I'm yeah, go look at that. Yeah. And thank, thank all you guys in the chat for being so patient with me. I know that uh, I would love to be more interactive in the chat. I am learning how to set my system up so that I can watch and chat at the same time. I don't quite have it laid out yet. Uh, I've got too many things spread out, but we'll get that dialed in. <laughs> I appreciate the tolerance, right? And the patience and yeah. all the feedback. So thank you for doing that. I am going to go ahead and end the broadcast again. Thank you guys. I will, we will catch everybody later. Fantastic. All right. Take care guys. We'll talk to you Thanks, later. Everyone. Bye.